Welcome back to Canyon Tune, and today we are going to continue working on the C5. I know it's been a couple uh, days since I've updated you guys last, but since we got the engine in, put the most of the cooling system back on, got the steering rack in, that was a pain, the uh, damper, got the AC compressor on, and I picked up some long tube headers and heat wrapped those so we don't have any issues in the engine bay. If you have a C5, I would definitely get your headers wrapped because a lot of people have problems with these stock wiring harnesses because they run right alongside between the block and the header. So spend the extra $100 and get some decent like DEI exhaust wrap and just get it done. Uh, let's see what else. I have my oil cooler mounted in the front here. Uh, I did have this mounted temporarily to the uh, foam insert going for the bumper. So I added these kind of like L bracket pieces and it's super secure now. Um, and I'm actually adding some fire sleeve to the lines that go to the back of the motor right here. So I'll have some fire sleeve in this area for both the oil cooler lines so those don't melt or anything weird happen with those and we should be good uh the other thing when you're putting these motors back together it's a good idea to get your headers just resting in the engine bay first before you put your heads on because i actually took these off of another car and it is a super pain to try and get those long tube headers out because i have to come from the top of the car and it's just it's a struggle there's a lot of stuff in the way and having the heads off and putting those in makes it 10 times easier and then uh, we got our texas speed double valve springs in uh, new valve seals we are going to be putting uh, hopefully the heads back on today if i can get this side of the engine figured out heat management wise but yeah, just uh, you know, make make sure when you're building race cars that you guys keep heat management in mind. And even stock, you can see anything that was near the headers have this kind of heat wrap on it. Um, even this uh, little engine loom coming down here. All right, so these oil cooler lines got a nice fire sleeve on them. I think uh, so. These are uh, ten dash ten and lines. I actually think I went like a dash 14, just so I can get these uh, fire sleeves up over the fittings themselves. They barely squeezed over and I was able to just slip them on. So that's good. Cleared a nice space for the header to go down in there and we'll put that on next. Next plan is we're gonna put our lifters in the lifter trays and then get our lifters in. It's funny because I, I see a lot of people forget to put the lifters in and they put the heads on and they go, oh crap. So yeah, <laughs> I made a nice mental note of that. These are going to be uh, LS7 lifters. They're a bit of an upgrade from the stock LS6 ones. Since I'm doing a new cam and everything's out, might as well uh, put new stuff in there anyways. They say to soak these in oil overnight, but it actually looks like these were already soaked. Ooh, I'm sure that's good for it. And they can only go in one way, so. A little groove in there. Actually gonna go with the um, the Johnson lifters, which have a little bit of a brace in between the two lifter pairs, but uh, I don't know. I felt like that was a little bit of overkill. I think that's more for motors that rev to like 8,000 RPM, super high revving, like de-stroked uh, LS motors or motors that live on the rev limiter most of the time. And since I don't have 
you know, crazy high lift cam. I don't think it'll be much of an issue. Again, this is only a 600 lift cam. If you get into like a 625, 645, something like that, you're probably gonna want uh, some really good valve train to be able to handle that much lift. And then with high lift cams like that, you really have to, you know, weigh if it's worth the drivetrain longevity because those, those valve trains will wear out a lot faster with a high lift aggressive camshaft like that. It's all about pros and cons. I'm not extremely worried about having the best cams, the best head, the best NA setup because eventually I'm gonna throw the ANA supercharger kit on this car, so Boost fixes pretty much everything. Got my uh, bolts here for the lifter trays. And these are gonna be torqued to 106 inch pounds, which is I think like nine foot pounds. Not a whole lot. All right, I was tripping there for a second cause I wasn't sure which way they went in, but apparently these notches have to face towards the pistons and I really think they only go in one way, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my head alignment dowels in. I think they go in these two corners. I'm gonna look that up, but I got brand new dowels, so when I put the heads on, it'll be easier to align everything with the head gasket and all that. Blocks all cleaned up face of it and we are going to put our head gaskets on got the alignment dolls in place so these are brand new genuine LS2 head gaskets and the reason I went with these is the bore size is correct for my overboard 6.0 All right, the heads are all torqued down. I had to get a 916 12 point socket, which I actually didn't have for whatever reason. Um, the next step is, and I'm kind of dreading this, I need to figure out how to hook up the rear steam ports. They are blocked off on the LS6s from the factory because uh, GM felt like they didn't need them, but that's why cylinders seven and eight always overheat, crack and fail, and I believe that's what happened on my LS6. So, what I'm gonna do potentially is take this uh, truck crossover steam port, hopefully that fits on the front with the intake manifold, and then in the rear, we are gonna take the slimmer LS6 slash LS1 crossover tube and then just route this line coming from the back of the motor to the front. But there's a lot of stuff I can get done in the meantime. I'm gonna probably connect the headers and get the rockers in place and, uh, and all that stuff. I wanna get these valve covers on too and make sure nothing falls into the engine. Uh, the main issue with a steam port in the rear is the intake manifold in the back has some clearance issues because you can see that it sticks out kind of far. So I may have to shave this down in some areas a little bit, uh, but hopefully that fits and doesn't put up a fight. Uh, very happy with the progress today. I got uh, the exhaust on, the uh, intake ended up fitting really well with uh, that steam port flipped the other way. So. For all the LS1, LS6 guys, if you just get a second uh, steam port crossover tube 
flip it around to the back and then just run the hose like this. And then you can actually tee these two together and then run them to the expansion tank. And then you have all four corners for the steam ports that actually fit the LS6, LS1 intakes, clears, which is nice. Uh, let's see, what else? Headers are pretty easy to get on, surprisingly. I still need to hook up the O2 sensors. Uh, I need to put the alternator and um, power steering pump on. And all you guys that own Corvettes probably know how much a pain in the ass that, that is to mount. Uh, let's see, what else? We've got to hook up the radiator fans and then X-pipe on the intake really not too much left to do and then just all the fluids of course i bought all the fluids and i forgot to get brake fluid because i forgot to drain the brakes because i was taking out the transmission uh let's see what else oh there's a couple grounds there's a ground on this side i need to extend i think and then run to the chassis probably like this ground right here and there's a big ground wire on the other side. This ground strap. And I think I'm actually going to hook it up to the block right down here. If that is used for something else, I'm actually going to just uh, probably use one of the header bolts. But I want to get that out of the way of the steering. Um, I'm glad I wrapped the headers because, you know... There's, these can melt spark plug wires. Um, there's a bunch of wiring down there that can melt. So yeah. And then I marked this off. So I remember to tighten that bolt. It's very important. <sighs> what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I should be able to actually fire this up in the next episode. I don't know where the actual shutoff valve went, but uh, stock, there's a shutoff valve. So there's a piece that goes to the intake here. There's a one-way valve that hooks up and then it goes to, I think, a tank vent. I actually just capped that off. I think that's all just emissions related and it's gonna be deleted in the ECU. So, oh, the last thing before I go is I upgraded the injectors. These stock injectors, um, they are pretty much maxed out from the factory. So like adding anything to a normal, um, you know, smaller engine, it, they're, they're gonna be well beyond their uh, usability. So I ended up getting some supercharged GXP injectors. I have to get the part number, but one of the injectors, I got this off another car that was blown up. One of the injectors looked fairly clogged. I hit it with some brake clean and hopefully that loosens it up, but I really need to keep an eye on that in the logs and make sure that last cylinder isn't getting lean and gonna blow up the motor. Uh, I marked it with some orange stuff there, so I remember to do that. Um, but yeah, overall, came along pretty good today. Made some really good progress. So yeah, uh, Keep an eye out for the next episode. I will probably try to button the rest of it up. I'm probably like 95% done right now. And we should be able to fire it up. Gonna be pretty exciting with the new headers, X-pipe and cam. It's gonna sound pretty wild. I do still have the stock exhaust, the titanium exhaust down there, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it sounds. See you guys on the next one. <laughs>